week's Camogie Report podcast. Uh, we're just after having another brilliant weekend of FPD Insurance Allo Championship action. And we have uh, two county finals to look forward to this coming Sunday, the Junior A county final and the Junior B2 final, all happening in the County Camogie Grounds drag on Sunday coming. But first of all, we'll look back on the weekend that's just gone. Um, on Saturday, we had the two FBD Insurance Senior Semi-Finals. We now know our pairing for the final. It's Drummond Inch and Clunty Rossmore uh, on Saturday week in the county final. It'll be the third time these two teams have met in three years. So another real uh, exciting final to look forward to. In the first of the two semi-finals on Saturday, um, Drummond Inch had a win over Aerog and Carty. Final score, 4-9 to 15 Drum blitzing Anacarty in the opening quarter. Um, in the first minute, Neve Tracy started off full forward, had a goal. Eve McGrath followed up with a point. Then six minutes into the game, Neve Tracy had a second goal to give Drum a two goals and one point to no score lead. Um, Anacarty were rocked, rocked by two more drum inch goals before half time, one from Neve Ryan and one from Marion Campion. This left the half time score four goals and five points to eight points. It was a much improved Anacarty uh, performance in the second half. They really took the game to, to drum an inch, but they were the wire excellent on freeze. And Sienna Walsh had a great game throughout. Um, they held drum to just four points in the second half. A disappointing performance by drum an inch in the second half. Um, they only scored four more points while Anacarty got seven points. But really, Anacarty will just re regret that very slow start that they had. Really gave themselves way too much to do. And... Um, you know, they couldn't create the badly needed goals that they needed in the second half against a very good drum and inch defence. So drum and inch winners there on a final scoreline of four goals on nine pints to 15 pints. In the other semi-final, a really close encounter, an exciting game, cracking match between Kashka and Cormacks and Clone T. Ross Moore. Both sides exchanged points in the opening half, with Kashka having the slight upper hand, leading at the break nine pints to seven. Philly Forty was excellent there in the first half, distributing the ball uh, to her inside forward line. Um, for Cashel, Anna Fahey was very good in freeze while Caught Van was excellent um, for Clonty Ross Moore. Then um, I suppose there was very little between the two sides at the break. Like I said, Cashel with the two point lead, there was super duels uh, throughout the game. Uh, two which which stands out for me was Lorna Ryan on Quiva Purdue and uh, Saoirse Ryan, uh, Mark and Casey Hennessy. Really good. Uh, could in um duels, like I said, um, I suppose at different stages, different individuals got on top of credit to, to their opponents, they never gave up. And uh, you know, it was a right battle between uh those two, four players. Uh the second half, then again, very little between the sides, up until Queen of Peru's goal. Uh, she scored a fantastic goal to put Cashel four points in front at that stage. Cashel almost had one foot in the county final. They looked like they could um, kick on, but credit to Clonty Ross Moore. They never, um, they never eased up. They continued to attack Ka uh, Cashel uh, at the whole time. And it, when Casey Hennessy got her goal, it really swung the game in their favour. Another brilliant goal um, by Casey. And um, that put them that put them back ahead. And at the final whistle, it was Cash, it was Clonty Ross Moore who ran out one point winners on a final scoreline of 113 to 112. Heartbreak for Cash and King Cormitz. Um, but um Clonty, a brilliant way to win a match, a brilliant semi-final that will really stand to them going in playing drum and inch, uh, the county champions. Uh, in like I said, two weeks' time, Saturday week, that game in the County Camogie Grounds Drag at 3 p.m. After the two senior semi-finals on Saturday, the Camogie Report podcast got reaction from both camps. Uh, we had Murray Devinson from Drum and Inch, James Heffernan, the manager of Clonty Rossmore, and Caught the Van from Clonty Rossmore. Hi, I'm here with uh, Murray Devinson, the Drum and Inch captain. And uh, congratulations, Moray, into the county final. Yeah, absolutely delighted. Um, you know, every year you go training, this is this is exactly the position you want to be in. So, absolutely delighted to get over the line semi final in two weeks' time. Now we'll, we'll recover and focus on the county final. Yeah, you must be really happy with the start. Your, your full forward line seemed to take them on every time, break the tackle, and had goals on their mind. Yeah, yeah, look, like Rosanna O'Donnell in there, you know, she's so strong there, and we've always really struggled to kind of burst through her. Like, she's just an absolute force. So. You know, we put in Neve Tracy there from, from the go and just, you know, kind of asked the question of Rosanna. And, you know, it worked in our favour, thankfully. And from there, we kind of just drove on from that. Yeah, yeah. Um, 
So you really, uh, with the fourth goal just before half time from Nee Bryan, it puts you in a great position. Mm -hmm. Very hard to motivate at half time. So Anna Carty did make a, a great uh, recovery there for, for 15 minutes, second half. Yeah, no, we, we really did. Um, they put it up to us in the last 30 minutes and we really struggled to kind of get going ourselves again. You know, we know exactly what we're going to get from Anna Carty. Like, they're an absolute dogfight. Anytime we play them, the physical battle, you know, there's, there's sore bodies coming out there today. But in fairness to them, they've been hit this year. Big losses there, Siobhan O'Neill and, and Gemma. And I think they kind of missed those kind of experienced heads on the field today and you know if they had them I think you know the score didn't really reflect the game that was put in there um, especially in the second half. I think after three years three, three years being champions Mairead you've really got some great teamwork going quick puck out to yourself and your ball up to Miriam and you got a point in, in, in two moves Aoife, yeah. Aoife hit a great ball into her sister Emer McGrath which was out of range for Emer McGrath and Emer puts the, the ball over the bar so little things like that have after three years oh, yeah. you've really come on with the teamwork yeah I suppose you know the experience over the last three years and you know like when you're winning you're probably a little bit fearless so we're kind of we're playing probably with that fearlessness a little bit which is great and as you said there like the panel of players that we've had you know we've a lot of subs coming on today they're bringing a lot of energy to help us finish out the game and that's what every club needs and thankfully this year now we, we have it um, and hopefully you know that'll help us again to get over the county final in two weeks time and Mary Bork back from in injury yeah. gives you a bit of energy exactly, too. Exactly, yeah, a bit of a boost, yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, Maria, best of luck in two weeks' time for, and best of luck to whoever you're playing as yeah. well. So, really thanks looking sweet. forward to a fortnight. Sam. Yeah, thanks very much. Joined by winning uh, Clownty Rossmore manager, James Heffernan. Uh, James, a really tough game of Camogie there today. In fairness, I think your experience went out in the end, but Cash will give you one hell of a performance. They did. Very tough game. Look, we're absolutely delighted. Um, again, two points down at half-time. Looked under pressure like Cash are a really good team. Like we'd seen him this year and we knew we knew what was ahead of us um you know we still felt we had enough but look like again we looked under pressure at half time but i have to give huge credit to our girls like they really really fought hard and um, fought for every single ball like you know you couldn't ask any more of them and like, they're a super bunch you know so like, we're delighted now delighted one thing that probably stuck out in the second half for us in commentary was that when the game was in the melting pot you could see your experience kind of shun through near the end cash will kind of give away some silly frees but you kind of kept your nerve all the time and when you have a free taker like caught it's worth anything to a team she was fantastic on the freeze today uh, yeah she was no caught was caught was brilliant but like, you know she always is on the freeze and, and you know and from general play but i thought i thought we really stepped up second half everywhere you know what i mean we we're very disciplined i know the ref probably gave a good free freeze uh, but i thought we we're very disciplined uh you know you know say defensively in the second half and uh, you know, I, th I thought everyone contributed now in the second half, er, look, like in the first half as well. But even the subs that come on, four or five subs come on, they all made a big difference. Um, so I, I'd say you're right. Like I say, the experience did probably tell. We've probably won a good few semi-finals now at this stage. Um, so it looks like we've two weeks now. You know, I suppose it's a big one now at this stage. I suppose the key thing when you get to semi-finals, no one wants to be perfect. They just want to win the games and get to that county final. You know, no one wants to fall in the semi-final hurdle. So it's your third county final in a row now, and it's the same opposition for the third year in a row. And uh, you'll know each other inside out. And you had a great battle already this year down below in Clonty. So, you know, I was here today and I watched Drummond Inch as well. So I've no doubt they'll be keenly prepared for that final in two weeks' time. But do you feel that this is your year to get over the line and that you've done enough maybe in the year's work to finally get over Drum in the final? Yeah, sure. Look, we're in the final and we're going to try and win it. You know, um, Drum are obviously going to be favourites. They're, they've really kind of dominated over the last five or six years. Like, I suppose similar to Burgess say, before them, you know. But look, like we feel, we, we feel we've got, got loads of talent and, you know, everything, you know, I suppose all the credentials in, in our team. So it's just a matter of putting it together on the day. But, like you see, you see Drum there, like, they go out and score four goals, I think, in the first half. I didn't see it now, but, you know, again, very impressive. You know what I mean? So, like, they win as huge favourites, but, like, like, we'll do our very best time to try and win it, if we can at all. James, we wish you the very all best right. of luck in the final. Yeah. Well done on a hard-fought victory over Cashel. I don't think you expected anything else from them today. They give you a right good test there, and you have great preparation now going into a county final in two weeks' time. Yeah, exactly like you said. Um, I suppose we knew coming up against Cashel, they're such, uh, they've got such a good mix of youth and experience. Uh, you can see that there today, and, and they're very fast. And look, I suppose we didn't have that much knowledge of them coming in because they haven't played them in championship. The last couple of years, they've been in the opposite group to us, and we haven't met them um, coming up along. So I suppose it was a little bit unknown, which brings its own uncertainty with it. But but we knew we were going to get a massive battle off them, and, and look, that was exactly what we got. It went down to the last bucket of ball again, only one, one score between us. So. Credit to Cashel, it was a great match, and um, and look, we, we were just we we're just like to get out the right side of them. I was just saying to your manager James Heffernan there in, in the previous interview that I felt your experience near the end of the game probably told you know you're, you're winning semi-finals year on year now, and I suppose Cashel just kind of maybe gave away a couple of soft frees near the end, and maybe th things went against them, maybe the experience caught them, but certainly I found with your team there just watching the game, you have a great know-how and how to see out games, and that will have to stand to you in two weeks' time again against all rivals, Drum and. 
you know, do you expect it to be uh, another ding dong battle in two weeks' time? Yeah, look, it's one we're really looking forward to, I suppose. Um, we've had a great uh, run in, I suppose, with Drum the last couple of years. We've got to know each other too well. We haven't uh, got the upper hand on them, you know, they're, they're still uh, champions and, and worthy champions too, you know. So they set the benchmark and we, we have to we have to try to get up to them and, and that's the task in two weeks' time. And look, like you said, I suppose there's a couple of us there now that have been around the block a while and um, doesn't make winning these matches any easier. But I suppose, like you said, there's the extra bit of communication, I suppose, from the back is to the wall. You'd like to say Courtney and, and Claude and Emer Lupin and that and Casey and Emer Burke, you know, and, and, and you coming on there like, like Sophie Mark came on and putting a great shift again there today. and. And the two quirks, Shannon and um, and Kelly, I thought put in a massive effort in the backs. Got got a few dispositions, so we've a nice mix ourselves. And and look, it was a bit of mature mature heads um, uh, on some of our players that, that look th thankfully got us over line today. And just a <coughs> quick one on, on your freeze. Your, your freeze were fabulous today from all angles and all things. And that's something you regularly practice, or is it just a thing that you you just take for granted that they're going to go over? Uh, or is it something you dedicate your time each week to doing? Yeah, no. Look, I I wish I could say that that they just go over, but yeah, I put a lot of time into them. I put a lot of effort into it. Um, I missed a few important ones there today, which I'm not happy about myself. Um, do you know, I, I expect it's it's a responsibility I've been given. Uh, it doesn't weigh down on me, but I take I take it um, as it comes, and it is something that I work very hard on, and and I think it's very important for the team. Do you know, so I try to do my bit. Luckily today, um, like you said, a few of them went over and, and there's definitely a bit to work on for the next day again. Um, but look, as I said, it's just something that I've been tasked to do. So I take that responsibility and I just work on it when I can. And the final question, it's third year in a row now, it's Calamity and Drummond Inches. Is this your year? Do you feel as a group that this is you know, your time to stand up now and take the, the game in two weeks' time by the scruff of the neck and finally get over that line and win a county final? Do you feel within that group that that's in you this year to do that? Yeah, well, look, we're an ambitious group, you know, and, and you can see that there's, what was it like, was there 36 togged out there today? We've a, we've a junior county final coming up next weekend, the senior county final the weekend after. Like, there's a massive buzz around the parish. There was fantastic support there for today, you know, and, and we, the, the parish will row in behind us now like they have done the last couple of years. And look, we've, we've a mammoth task ahead of us and we know that you know but it, it won't be for no one to try and, and the next two weeks we'll be dedicating and doing everything we can um, to make sure to win the best possible position back up here in two weeks time to give it a right rattle and for what happened G as a club definitely the last question with Dylan this year how special would it be for this group of players and what went on in your, your parish and how sad you all were and how sad you will be for the rest of your lives with what happened to Dylan how much would it mean to you and to everybody involved with County Ross more to know that you did it in this year that it'll probably make it extra special if you can get over that line yeah, look, it's 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 been a very tough year for everybody, and uh, and no, and none more than, than the quirks, you know, and and we're, we were all in behind them when, when their need was most, and, and look, that's what that's what uh, rural parishes do, and and um and we're fi we're finding our, our bit of release with, with sport, and um look, there's a lot of connections with this team, with with the Cork family and Dylan himself, and um we're we're trying to do our own bit and sticking together, and um you know, and just having each other's back, and, and coming to the field and going training and and socialising and that, and that that's the way that we're doing it, you know, and we don't know whether it's right or wrong, but it's still, it's the only way we know, you know, and it's the hurling way, and look. Hopefully, like I said, with, with the connections that, that the Cork family have to this team, hopefully we're get, bringing some bit of joy in, into their lives at the minute. We're looking forward to two county finals. Cool. Well done on today and the best of luck in the county final. On Sunday then we had the FPD Insurance Junior A County semi-final between St. Rishas Feathered and Brian Burroughs. This game was played in dreadful weather conditions, um, off of wind and rain, and credit to both sets of players who really worked tirelessly against the elements Um in a bid to try and qualify for a county final. Uh, it was Brian Bruce who ran out winners on a final scoreline of two goals and uh, one pint to nine pints for Brian Bruce. Um, look, they had the wind in the first half and uh, I suppose they dominated most of the first half. Couldn't really get the scores on the board that they needed. After 10 minutes, they led two points, no score. Um, but as time went on, they began to convert more, more of their scores. Ashley Nine was very good, as was Rebecca Burke, um, Mary Barrett as well on the freeze. And they built up a five point no score lead after 20 minutes. Uh, but then Lucy Spillane um, had a shot from distance that went all the way under the crossbar into the back of the net to give St. Risha's uh, a badly needed opening score. That brought the score back to five points to a goal. Um, and that's the way it was at half time. St. Rishas then came out in the second half um, with great urgency, had the wind uh, with them as well. Casey Ryan got a pint from a free and then also um, received a lovely pass from Emmy Spillane there at the edge of the square and finished to the back of the net um, to give St. Rishas Feather the lead. But uh, credit to Brian Baru's defence, they were, they were very good and um, you know they kind of shut up shop after that. 
Sinrishas couldn't break them down. Lena Walsh was excellent for um, Brian Bruce, as was Ema Miles that came off the bench. Um, and, you know, Ashley Ryan got a couple of more scores. So did Mary Barrett. They got four, four points in the second half and to give them, I suppose, a deserving two point or a deserving lead at the end, two point lead, yeah, at the end, uh, nine points to two goals and a point. Um, they were the stronger side overall and they booked their, they booked their place now in the county final. That county final is happening this uh, Sunday. It's a 3.30 p.m. throw-in in the County Camogie grounds in the rag. Money goal against Brian Bruce. Two top teams in the county this year and uh, both topped their own groups. Both won their semi-finals and both will do battle this Sunday in the county final. After uh, their semi-final win, I spoke to Brian Bruce, giant captains, Emer Miles and Helena Walsh, uh, got their thoughts on the game and also uh, their thoughts heading into this county final. Right now by giant captains of Brian Brew, uh, Helena and Emer. Emer, we'll start with you. A great win there. Uh, tough, very tough match and very difficult conditions there for a semi-final. Yeah. yeah, really tough conditions today. Like, could have went either way, I suppose. Um, you know, the ball is slippy, not sticking a lot of the time, but um, it was just the type of game that we just had to grind it out. So, great win. We're delighted we came away with it there in the end. Massive effort from everyone. Um, all the girls 1 to 15 and the girls that came on as well so just fantastic to get the win and you know I suppose just a good win going into next week as well give us a bit of confidence going into next Saturday and Helena it's been a bit of a roller coaster, whirlwind I suppose of emotions for you beaten last weekend in a football decider against St. Risha's but um, great to come back and, and you know lift the spirits and get a win here and now have a county final next weekend yeah, it's brilliant now. I suppose last weekend it kind of shook us a small bit, but then it drove us up at the same time to say that we need to win this this week. We're not letting them win two in a row on us, so it really drove us on, and we've such a, a want to get to a county final this year. Like, oh, it's brilliant to get there now. So. And I remember speaking to you at the launch of the championship earlier on this year, and you know you felt you felt training was going well, and I suppose you're up junior uh, A now, and you want to drive on and push on, and you've you know you sit down a marker earlier in the year, and you're after reaching that county final, so. Obviously, big test next weekend against Money Gall, but you're certainly going to be up for it. Oh yeah, definitely. Yeah, like we came top of the table this year, so it was brilliant to put ourselves up there. And there's no doubt there's going to be a challenge next next weekend, but we're definitely up for it now. Like, yeah. And Emer, just again on today's game, I suppose you you know you're on top, probably dominated a lot of the first half, but a late goal there by Feather, you know, meant there was only yeah. two points in at half time. And they came out and got a goal then and a point, I think. So you looked in trouble at that stage, but in fairness, you regrouped and, yeah. and got the job done. Yeah, we did. That's it. Look, I suppose we hadn't a great first half, I suppose, ourselves. We played with the wind. I think we had something like, I don't know, was it 13 wides or something in the first half. So, like, we kind of went in at half time, knowing, I suppose, for most of the first half we were the better team. So we needed to drive it on. Like you said, I suppose Feathered came out then all guns blazing. and they got a goal and a point straight away. So we were really on the back foot. But from then on, we just drove it on. And I don't think they had a scoring chance after that. And we just drove it on and, and got the win. So grinded it out, like I said. So it's great. Yeah. And Helena, would you know much about Money Gall? Have you played them this year? Um, we haven't actually played them this year yet now. But uh, we went to the semi-final all right. So we, we marked a few players to watch. So we will know who we're coming up against next weekend now. But um I know, we, we were looking forward to it now and we're ready for it now, so it's be good now to play them at last. And you good support here from Brian Bruce, and no doubt you'll be hoping for great support next weekend. Oh yeah, it'll be brilliant now to have a good crowd cheering us on, all the underage parents and everyone will hopefully come up to see us play, so it'll be brilliant to, to have even the smaller ones just to cheer us on there and see see what they could be playing um, in a few years' time, so it'll be good. Perfect. Best, best luck next weekend. So as I mentioned, FBD Insurance Junior A County Final is happening this Sunday in the County Camogie Grounds in Durag at 3.30pm between Moneygall and Brian Burroughs. Moneygall are many people's favourites from the start of the year, having lost last year's County Final against Borderland Dwella. They look to be a stronger team this year, with well, them back Breed Ryan and Julie Kelly, two really experienced players. They've had different injuries throughout the year, which has really tested and shown the strength and depth of their panel. Cotton Tracy, a young uh, under-16 player, has been excellent on freeze and from play. Maria Tehan, back from injury, really impressive there in the half-forward line in the county semi-final. Mary Ryan, her usually excellent self there at midfield, and she's partnered there with Lauren Martin, her real workhorse there in the middle of the field. Um, their captain is, is Neve Larkin. She operates at full forward, and she's been lethal all year from play. Um, 
scoring, you know, a goal in most games and clocking up um, the points as well. So a really key player for them. Um, they, they're looking very strong, but they're up against Brian Brews, who, you know, a real character building uh, semi-final performance against the Enriches Feathered in the semi-final. Really tough game. It was tough conditions coming into it, having lost to Feathered in a football, uh, seen a football county final um, just the week before. A lot of dual players on both teams. So, but in fairness, to credit to Brian Brews, they regrouped, they refocused, and uh, they put so much into their semi-final win over uh, St. Rishas. Um, like I said, in really tough conditions, came out the other side and uh, they're going to be raring to go for this final. They have like so Alison O'Mahony and Mary Barrett are on the county uh, junior panel this year. They have Emer Miles, Lena Walsh, real leaders on the field. Um, Casey Meehan, county minor goalie, who's who plays a full forward and is a real threat there at the edge of the square. So, you know, they have huge ability and um, are where they are, are where they want to be, I suppose, at the start of the year, the, the goal would have been a county final. They're there now and they're there to win it, but uh, up against a uh, very good opposition in Moneygall. Um, at the, at, after the semi-final last weekend, I spoke to Moneygall captain uh, Eve Larkin uh, as she looked ahead and looked forward to this Sunday's final. I'm joined now by uh, Money Gall captain Neve Larkin. Neve, uh, all set for a county final next weekend? Yeah, we're really looking forward to it now. Um, enjoying the balls and the build up, and you know it's a good place to be. So training that's going well. So looking forward now to next weekend. Yeah. And um, Brian Brews uh, won the semi final here today against the Enrichas Feathered. Um, I don't think you haven't met them obviously in championship this year. Um, but you know they're obviously a tough side, and they're going to give you a very tough battle next weekend. Oh yeah, definitely. Um, you know, I think we played them earlier on in the league this year. You know, when the beat us that day, so um, we know how tough uh, next weekend is going to be. You know, um, they're a good football side as well. So you know, it's going to be hard to play against. Um, so you know, we really know we've a, a really tough task ahead next weekend. But looking forward to it. And obviously, totally different weather conditions today uh, compared to your semi-final. You know, very tricky conditions wind and rain and you know I suppose what would you be hoping for yourself next weekend would you be hoping for a fine day or would it, does it matter or? yeah look I suppose um, ideally you'd love a fine day you know Nina was great there last weekend the pitch is in great condition um, I suppose it kind of suits our game as well you know but look um, anything can happen in a final and I suppose you have to take all these things into consideration and I suppose we're just so glad to be here now I don't think it really matters what way the weather's going to be we'll just go out and hoping for a good performance and please God then the result will look after itself and obviously last year you got to this stage, you were beaten in a final against Borland. Is there anything you've done different this year or will do different this week, I suppose? Um, I suppose, look, this year, I suppose for the first time probably really in, in ever, like, you know, we have um, great competition for places. Um, like, training's unreal. Do you know, no one on the team is, is sure their place. Do you know, we got the likes of Julian Breed back this year who are just unreal, unreal leaders on the team. And, you know, we have great young girls there as well. So, um, competition for places is just absolutely huge. And, you know, it's just improving improving everything, like intensity, everything all along the way. So, um, no, just great look of your great management team behind us as well and just everything is going well and please God now it can work out for us next weekend. And it's been a fantastic competition, the FPD Insurance Junior A competition. Um, a good final is expected next weekend. You'll be hoping for a good money goal support to come out behind you. Yeah, definitely. Look, uh, look, our supporters are brilliant. You know, there's many a day here in the rag. They've been here consoling us over the last few years and I'm sure they'll be out now next weekend as well and, and hopefully this time it'll be a, a happier result and we'll get a good performance and please God get the win. So no, our supporters are brilliant. Um, I've no doubt they'll be here next weekend cheering us all on. Thanks very much, Neve. So Neve Larkin, their captain of Money Gold Junior A team, county final this Sunday, 3 30 pm in the county community grounds in the rag. And we hope to see a really good crowd there. Uh, what is it going to be a double header as the junior B2 final takes place beforehand at 1 pm? Uh, and that is between Clanonti and Ross Moore and Shannon Rovers. If you can get to the rag on Sunday, don't worry, both games will be streamed live on the Tipperary Camogie YouTube and we'll be talking all about them as well and getting reactions on next week's podcast. So the Junior B2 semi-final features Clonty Rossmore and Shannon Rovers. Um, both teams, you know, Clonty, very good uh, group campaign, uh, lost one game only and that was to Tumi Vara. They bet Shannon Rovers in their opening game. Uh, that was very early on in the year, a lot of change since then. Um, but they actually lost to Tumi Vara, who Shannon Rovers bet in the semi-final. I suppose coming into the knockout stages, Clonty probably looked to be the better of the two sides, looked to be the stronger. But Shannon Rovers, after having two excellent wins 
first over Ballybick Grange in the quarter final, and then in the semi final, beating um, many people's favourites, Tumi Vara, who had topped the group. They bet them uh, in the semi final by two points. So, again, a really close uh, encounter is expected between two very strong sides. Both clubs, obviously, it's their second teams, but both clubs' first teams are going very well. Clonty Ross more true to a senior county final. Uh, as far as I know, they all train together one big panel. So you will see um, all that, all, all the Clonty senior players and management there on, on Sunday supporting their junior B2 team. It would give them a huge lift having their seniors playing in a county final the week after. Same with Shannon Rovers. Their intermediate team are in a county final or in a county semi final this Saturday. Um, they're up against Newport Banner Hinge. A win there would give them a huge boost going into uh, the Junior B2 final on the Sunday. How that game goes can also depend how Sunday's game will go. Will Shannon Rovers need to use some players? Obviously, a lot of their starting team will be subs on their intermediate team. If that's a close game, if subs are needed, obviously they will uh, be bought on and that will impact how strong their, their team will be then on the Sunday. But, you know, Shannon Rovers, big numbers there, big panel, two big panels. Um, a great mix of you and experience on both sides. Uh, we have a captain for Clonty, Ross Moore's Ashleen Eli, um, and she spoke about some of the younger players, likes of Andrea Quirk and others who, um, you know, give that team a great mix. It's the same with, um, with Shannon Rovers. You'll see the likes of Maeve Cahalan, County Under-16 player there, um, playing with some of the more experienced players. So both teams have a great mix. Um, Again, we had the preview uh, of this of this county final uh, last Saturday, where I spoke to both captains, um, uh, captains of the Clonty Rossmore team and the Shannon Rovers team, and got their thoughts ahead of this weekend's final. Now, I'm joined now by captain of Clonty Rossmore Junior B2 team, Ashley Eli. Ashley, next weekend you have your county final here in the County Camogie Grounds in the Rag against Shannon Rovers. How are you set? Yeah, Jerry, we're really looking forward to it now. It was great to get over the Anacarty game here last week. They gave us a right hard, tough battle. It took us to extra time. So looking forward to getting into the semi-final now next weekend, or the counter-final next weekend. I suppose the semi-final, like you said, uh, you needed a goal to bring it to extra time, then you won it in extra time. It's just the kind of tough game that really prepares you for a final. Oh, absolutely. It was a great game to get under our belt. It was a hard, tough, fought battle. That Anacarty brought everything at us. And yeah, it took a goal and it took extra time uh, it was really difficult, but we got over the line and we're ready now for the county final. And you bet Shannon Rovers in the group stages, but I suppose that will matter little next weekend. And we bet them in, it was, Shannon Rovers was our first game in the group stages, and yeah, they gave us a really hard game. Um, we, they were ahead at the at half time, and then we came out with a much better performance in the second half, and at least then we got over them in the first game that we played. But they've been improving with every game, had a good win in the quarter final and the semi final. Bet to me far a team that bet ye. So, you know, I'm sure you're expecting a very tough, close game. Oh absolutely. We had we had a great campaign in the group stages, but we were only bet by one team which was Tumi Vara. So then to see Shannon Rovers beat Tumi Vara in the semi final here last week, it really shows us that we're going to have a tough battle against them in the county final. And just a little bit on the junior B two competition, um, I suppose for your likes of yourself maybe that played for years and, and stepped away for a while, to have a, a, a second team in the parish to be able to come back and play Camogie, um, I suppose not at the high level I've seen, or, but still very competitive, uh, it must be nice to, to be back playing Camogie again. Oh, it's a fantastic competition because really for us, we have a huge spread of age, older girls and younger players, um, some older girls with a lot more experience and it, it helps bring on the younger players as well. It's a great competition and I find this year we've had great competitive matches. Every match that we've played has been a great competitive match, which is it's a fantastic competition for us. To have two teams out uh, and field to field two teams, it's just it's a fantastic competition. And to have two teams both in the county finals, your senior team obviously had a great win yesterday in the county semi final. That will give a good boost to you next weekend. There'll be a great crowd. I'm sure all the seniors will be there supporting you ahead of their county final the week after. Absolutely, they were all here with us last week and we were all here with them yesterday. And there was a huge crowd of support here the last two days for us, for the two teams for the county finals. So I'm sure now the parish will get behind us and we'll have great support the next two weeks for two county finals, which is a fantastic achievement for such a small parish.
Thanks very much, Ashley. Now by uh, Ashley and Bethany, two junior B2 joint captains for Shannon Rovers. Ashley, we'll start with you. Uh, county final next weekend. I suppose you had kind of mixed results in the group stages, but last two games, two good wins, and I suppose you're in the right frame of mind now for, for the final. Yeah, definitely. So we obviously didn't get off to the start that we wanted um, with injuries and girls not around and things like that. But um, look, we're in the county final now, so we've kind of peaked when we needed to. And we got the two wins, as you said. We probably upset things a little bit the last day um, beating Jimmy Vara, so we're kind of raring to go for the weekend again. And just on last week's semi-final win over Jimmy Vara, you know, it was a low-scoring game. I think it was finished eight points to six, but obviously a tough game and a good game to get before a final. Yeah, we were lucky. Um, you know, we kind of half time we came in and we were just up, but like it could have went any way. And Toom had a penalty there towards the end and it could have drawn, but we were lucky enough to come out for a win. And uh, do you know much about Cologne? Do you know you played them in the group games? They had a very tough semi final win over in Akarty, but you know they're a good side, obviously. Yeah, um, we played them in the, the first round, um, so it was a big game for both of us, I suppose. And they definitely have a few young girls there. And, How do you prepare for this Junior B2 uh, Championship? Do you all train together with the intermediates, the same management? Yeah, we have the same management, same training. Um, it's great having the intermediate girls, you know, a bit of strength in the training session. Um, we had a panel match this morning. Um, we have training a couple of times during the week now, and hopefully we'll push on from there. And would you have girls, we'll say, on on this team will be togging out maybe a subs on the intermediate team in the semi-final next Saturday? Yeah, we're all one big panel, so we train together, you know, we go all go to the matches together, our junior girls and our intermediate, so it's good. And if need be, the girls will be able to step up for the intermediates on Saturday if they have to? Yeah, if they have to, yeah, we'll, we'll take whatever we can, you know, we need to get a win on Saturday for the intermediate girls as well, so... Very good. And I suppose the Junior B2 competition is a great competition for the likes of Shannon Rovers of big numbers to have two teams for younger players coming through and or from even older players maybe who used to play on the first team. Yeah, definitely. So I think we have like 40 plus of training, so it's great that, that we're able to fill two teams. I think we've like 23 girls togged out there for the Junior B. Um, a real mixture of age, um, some older girls with that, bringing that experience and then, and then we've the like so Maeve Catlin, Nicola Kelly, all those girls coming through as well. So it's great that we can kind of play as one and it's great to bring those girls through. Brilliant stuff, girls. Thanks very much and best of luck. So Sunday is obviously going to be a very busy day with the two FBD Insurance County Finals happening in the County Camogie Grounds in the RAG. Earlier that day also at 11 o'clock in Kilcommon, we have the Junior B County Semi-Final between McCarkey Boroughs and St. Cronin's. Um, Another massive game for both clubs as they look to join Portro in a county final. So that's McCarthy Burris and St. Cronin's. That's happening at 11 a.m. in Kilcommon. Um, also then on Saturday, two massive games happening in the county Mokomo grounds in the rag. It's the FBD Insurance Intermediate Semi-Finals, a double header. Shannon Rovers and Newport Battle in Hinch at 1 p.m. Bursley and Kilowan McDonough's at 3.30 p.m. Again, encourage everyone to get to the County Camogie Grounds in the RAG to watch these two games. But if anyone's away or anyone can't make it, they will be stri- streamed live on the Tiberi Camogie YouTube channel and we will be chatting about them as well in the podcast in the next coming weeks and looking forward to that Intermediate County Final as well. Um, that's happening on the 29th of October. So, so much happening. Um. We don't have time for any more. We could stay here all day chatting about all the games that are coming up and all the games that have been played. But uh, that's all for this week's episode. Hope you enjoyed it and uh, we'll see you again soon.